done. Hi guys, welcome back to Ask Careers. So today I'm with Seamus McConaughey, who is the Work Experience Development Manager, um, who's based on the Jordantown campus. So I have a couple of questions for our Go Global Week. Um, we have themed our Ask Careers um, to do with all international experiences. So I have a couple of questions for you, Seamus. So number one being, what is the Erasmus scheme? Erasmus means that we have a partnership at this university with other universities throughout Europe. And what it can mean for our students is two things. One is that you could study for a period, whether a semester or a full academic year, with one of the partners that we have across Europe. And the other thing is that if you find your work placement for the year, it could be defined as a traineeship within Erasmus scheme, and you could get funding each month to be in work somewhere in Europe during your placement year. Okay, so your second question is finance for studying abroad. The issue about finance is going to be complicated because the number of options you have to study abroad are very wide. The first thing to do is look carefully at all of the options. Um, if you're going to prepare yourself for a successful transition to a location overseas, then do let everybody know what you're planning to do. Because it may be that your birthday's coming up and a little bit of cash is going to go a long way whenever you're going to Poland. Um, so look out for those sorts of opportunities that allow you to save, keeping hold of some of the funding you get through your part-time work if you're working part-time, and looking in advance as to what the university here has at your faculty and at our level. I mean, we have the Global Ambassador Scheme, and we keep everybody who signed up to Global Ambassador Scheme informed about the funding opportunities. Uh, one of those would be the FIT Award, the Fund for International Travel, and the other one is a fund that comes through Santander. So there's a couple of things there already um, that was going to be very useful for getting ready to transition to another country. Okay, so your third question is, how do I approach working or studying abroad? In this case, you're going to find that there's a huge network um, that should start within the university with your academic staff. Maybe you have a placement tutor connecting with your colleagues around your classroom. A lot of those people are maybe thinking about the same thing and they have some ideas as well. At the Career Development Centre, people like myself and the information team and your career consultants will all have some ideas as to how other people have gone abroad before. So there are people who have done this ahead of you and maybe they're a year ahead of you on your degree programme and connecting with them will help you understand how it worked for them and what they would say, this is what you need to know before you go. So look out for those sorts of things. Those are the things that will help you identify where the starting point for you will be. And your starting point will be probably, first of all, choosing a country. So don't think about the whole world at once. It's a big place and so many options, you're not going yeah. to get through them all. Perfect. So your fourth question is, how, do I have to pay for study abroad? That, again, is going to relate to the number of opportunities that are available. Some of the study abroad opportunities are fantastically well supported. The Study USA programme, everybody's heard about. The funding available there is second to none. You get flights covered, you get your accommodation covered, a meal plan, help with books, all of those things. And that's the one that's going to be very competitive and it comes around every year. The deadline is usually a November deadline. If you miss that one, your next option for studying in the USA perhaps is going to be through the ISEP programme and then through other exchange programmes. So with each of those programmes, the funding changes depending on what support is available, maybe through local government, from our own university, from the partner institution overseas. So um, do look into them carefully. It can vary, and whether or not you're paying fees is going to be an issue for many people. Okay, so your fifth question is, how do I organize my placement year abroad? For most of the degree programs, there will be a placement tutor. Your placement tutor, in partnership with the Career Development Centre, will make sure that you have the support that you need to be able to identify the employers that take on Ulster students year on year. Okay. Or if you have your own ideas on how you want to approach an employer, we can give you advice on how to make that approach, what to say, how to sell your degree programme, the skills you've got. Um, beyond that, you want to make sure that you're making a good application, a strong application. The application that meets the requirements of the employer or the style of communication that they have. If you're seeking employment in another country, be aware that maybe it isn't an ordinary application form or a CV that you would use. You'll have to adjust the standard format to suit the employer or the country. Um, 
whenever you're going beyond that, organizing yourself is again the way you would for any transition is know exactly what you've got to have in place before you go. Some legal documents perhaps in terms of your visa, um, permission to study or work overseas, making sure that you know about your flights, where your accommodation is going to be, who's going to be in that accommodation with you because that will help make the costs more manageable. Um, looking as well at what you've got to take with you, think about if you've got medications you've got to have with you, if you've got some program of study that's got to be done first of all or that's got to be arranged before you leave the country. There are a lot of things and that's why your placement tutor, the career development consultants, the other students who are thinking of the same thing are going to be very important to being well prepped before you leave. Okay, perfect. So the final question is, what are the benefits of working or studying abroad? The benefits are really well documented. Um, you would know that all our local companies have got a global reach because they're not all relying on customers who are sitting in around Northern Ireland. So for you to be able to understand how business is done overseas or understand how to communicate with people from other cultures, then that will make you a very attractive employee in the future. The other thing that's very useful is that you will begin to see how other people interact with you. You see, whenever you go overseas, it's not that you just learn about other people and other cultures. You learn about yourself and your own attitudes and you begin to measure yourself against what you would like to be, where your weaknesses are and how you might improve them and understand better the background for you and what it's been like growing up in your own country. So that's a real strong benefit for you. Perfect. Well, thank you so much, Seamus, for taking part in our Ask Careers. Um, so tune in next week for more questions. Thanks.